Does that look all right? I'm not in North Wilkesboro. It's good. It's good. It just told me it couldn't do it this way. I had to uh, turn it. You should test that at home. Oh. <laughs> How's that? This tagger. No. Yeah, that's good. Take this. Please hold for the next available customer service representative. This is all you Okay. How's it? Can you see it? Is. it? These is sideways. Oh, these. you folks out there. Is it sideways? It's sideways. This is some good soup tonight, aren't they? <laughs> did, did you start it sideways? Yeah. Well, okay. I'll just start it again. Whoa, where are you going? <laughs> It can't be. Well, it is. But, but, that's not what I'm saying. Hard on your eyes when you're looking at something on Facebook. Or Facebook like no, okay, now you got it. They've got one of those. I didn't do that. Phone is one of the right there. Yeah, yeah. 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 Buy my car. Makes me busy. I, I, yeah, I guess. I look at it for about five seconds and then I'm done. I can't look at it longer. Is that better? Now you're off. It has been a long time. Shit. Seems like yeah, go to the left. Mm -hmm. That's behind. That's last year. Yeah, I think I've laid out last, last year. Last year, as Patrick. <laughs> 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 it's it's out. It's Don't out. mess my cookie. Too sharp for the tag. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Windy sauce. Windy sauce. Dang it, perfect. Yep, perfect. Yep, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay. Hey, Erica. Thank you, everybody, for being here tonight. Good group. Mm -hmm. We have some that are away from us for sickness. But David came home this morning. I talked to him as he was coming up the road. Still pretty weak. Still not feeling great, but they, he's taking antibiotics, and they think that's going to straighten him out. He had a infection, viral infection, just like a flu or something like that in the sac, the pericardium sac around his heart. And one of the reasons they seem to forsyth is that can, that can mask a heart attack. It's hard to tell the difference. And so they wanted to be sure. But uh, a lot of sick folks, I was telling somebody, I think it's Rick, um, I went down there and the, the, they have a large, very big, as you can imagine, the emergency room, if you've never been to Forsyth, and it was jam-packed, and everybody had masks on. Mm -hmm. And uh, I walked in, and I was the only one that had a, didn't have a mask on. Oh, no. I figured it, like one of them movies that's on it. <laughs> oh, no. But uh, we got one of those on. But it's a lot of flu. And down there, the lady said, the nurse said that they have, they have two types of flu going around. Mm -hmm. It's not all the same. So it's kind of a, a pretty bad down there. So remember them people in the prayers? Uh, remember, the Lord's prayer. remember Deborah, my supervisor, mm -hmm. and her husband Scott. He had surgery Sunday. Right. Um, he's doing better. He's still going to be in the hospital for about a week. So they're down at Foresight, and she's down there trying to work and go back and forth. So just and his remember name them. Is Scott. Scott. Yeah, I remember, I remember meeting uh, Scott. Scott and Deborah. Mm -hmm. uh, you remember Brother David? Remember Brother Allen? Mm -hmm. you see Brother Allen? Brother Allen had a little accident, and if you see her Sunday, it looked like he'd been, something had run over him. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, it looks a whole lot better today. And uh, had uh, some bruises and stuff on his face. It's good mm -hmm. to see him healing up. Remember Stacy? St uh, who? In her attempt to, <laughs> to bum herself up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, we hope that that's going to get better soon. Delaney. Delaney. Um, Linda's, grand Linda's daughter. granddaughter. Linda's granddaughter. Okay. Yeah. All right. They put her back in the hospital today. This um, infection. Okay. Mm -hmm. Linda Osborne's granddaughter. Okay. Remember all. Uh, I remember uh, Donnie, Miss Jackie Miller. Uh, anybody else? <laughs> Certainly, a lot of folks have received. Remember our, remember our ones that we're praying for. Mm -hmm. uh, hope you have been praying this week for your one. I made a little thing at my desk at work, try to remind me uh, to uh, pray for my one, and uh, and I'm hoping to uh, visit my one this week, this weekend, and uh, invite him to church. It's just what an exciting thing it is to, um, and a humbling thing it is to be able to be in a part of doing that. And uh, so remember your ones. Mine may take two months, I'm just saying. <laughs> well, they might. <laughs> I'm sure. You can give uh, Sherry's mom. Sherry's mom has been sick. And good job, her. All right. I have, we have family and then another I have I have needs of my family and members and uh, <laughs> friend or pray for the lost around us Amen. Because we need each and every day uh, you might have an opportunity to tell them about Jesus all right let's go to the Lord for you Heavenly Father in the name of Jesus we're so thankful for your grace and your mercy and your love when we think about you, we think about that you're a powerful God, a holy God, a righteous God, but you're a loving God, a forgiving God, a merciful God. And thank you for your forgiveness and your cleansing. And thank you for salvation. Thank you for having an opportunity to know the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior. Thank you for sending Jesus, your son, to die for us on the cross of Calvary. Yes. We know that the Bible teaches that he and his finished work on Calvary is the only way uh, to have a relationship with you and to gain eternal life and an eternal home in heaven. We lift up those that we've mentioned already for uh, sickness and <coughs> salvation and other needs. There are <coughs> many needs. We pray for each one and Pray for those that are in the hospital, rest homes. Uh, we, pray for we pray for the issues and situations that our country's in. Mm -hmm. We do pray that God, you would guide and lead our leaders, and that they would be responsive to what you tell them. Mm -hmm. We pray for our nation, that we'd see a nation that is getting away from God to turn back to God. Now we just pray you guide us in this study tonight as we continue to study about that glorious day when you return to this earth and establish your kingdom. And we ask these things and we pray them in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Guess what chapter and book we're going to look at tonight? Matthew 24. That is a clairvoyant. He knew right off. Uh, we are going to we're going to go back to Matthew 24, but we're we're going to be looking at verse starting at verse 40, 41 tonight, and uh, uh, actually, well, actually, verse 40 and 41 is uh, is where we're at, and we've been we've been looking back in the Old Testament, Genesis chapter six, seven, eight, nine, about the time of the flood, because Jesus said, and he said here. Uh, in verse 38, for as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking and marrying, giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not. I really think that's probably the synopsis of, of what Jesus was talking about. 
they lived in a society that was a decadent, uh, ungodly, unrighteous, much like we live in today, but really didn't express the, 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 their idea that they had any concept of how bad off they were. You know, that's what we live in today. You know, it's one thing to, to have a problem, you know. Uh, it, it's one thing to, to have a 500-pound gorilla in your backseat. Uh, there's only one thing worse than having a 500-pound gorilla in your backseat, and that's not knowing that you've got a 500-pound <laughs> gorilla in your backseat. And that's kind of the way our society is today, and the society was then. They were so, that that society, that pre-flood society that Jesus referred to as a likeness to the society that will be on the earth before uh, his, immediately before his return, uh, they both had the same spiritual disconnection with truth, a spiritual disconnection with God, a spiritual disconnection with anything uh, having to do with righteousness and truth and godliness and morality and decency. And, and I will remind you that, you know, you may say, well, that's our way our society is today. That's true. We have a, we have a horrible society as far as their relationship with God and understanding of what God expects and understand what good, decent, just good, decent uh, life is all about. But I remind you, you uh, I've heard people say, well, it just can't get any worse. Oh, yeah, it's going to get way <laughs> worse. Yeah. And the reason it's going to get way worse is there's a day coming before the second coming called the rapture. And, uh, you know, the church, <coughs> albeit for all its problems, difficulties, and failures that everybody, you know, has no problem pointing out, uh, it is the salt and the light. Yeah. Jesus said to the disciples and to the church, ye are the salt and the light. Amen. Salt and light. Salt preserves the society. Light gives uh, illuminance to the spiritual needs of society. And when you take that out, you say, oh, it's bad now, but what about when you take uh, the church out? Uh, now, what kind of a society are you going to have? Well, it's like I say, it's going to get a lot worse. And so it gives us, you know, it's kind of like uh, looking, uh, how many of you ever looked through a, a telescope? Raise your hand. I don't believe it. No, I don't believe it. Um, you ever notice the telescope has got two ends? If you look in the wrong end, everything is smaller. If you look in the right end, everything is closer and bigger. Uh, this, when Jesus said, as in the days of Noah were, so shall be the days of the coming of the Son of Man, he was saying, it don't matter which end of the telescope you look at, it, it's kind of like their bookends, their parallels, you know. And uh, so now we, now we understand somewhat what he was talking about. I don't think he necessarily was talking about, he didn't, he really didn't give a lot of specific quote unquote signs. He just said, look at that civilization before the flood and then that's the way it's going to be before I come. And so for those that will be living on the earth at that time, it will be helpful for them to understand how bad it was then and what was going on then and now uh, what's going on in their lifetime. So in verse 39, when he says, and knew not until the flood came and took them all away. The knew not is the, I think basically the sum up terminology that Jesus is looking for for us to understand. Uh, they just didn't realize what was going on. Anytime, anytime Jesus referred to his second coming, he always said, he always said something like, don't be caught unawares. Be aware. Uh, don't be asleep spiritually. That's why he said that, because this civilization is bad, but it's also bad, and it, like I say, the 500-pound gorilla, it's got the gorilla in the back seat, but it don't even realize it because it's so spiritually dysfunctional. So new not is the key. If you don't know that judgment is coming, if you don't realize that judgment is near, if you don't conceive that there's anything wrong if you don't uh, look at society and say it can't go on like this, what's going to happen? You're not going to prepare for it. You know, it's like when they have a hurricane 
down in Florida or in the Gulf Coast. And you know, they start giving warnings and, and oh, you know, it'll be all right. And people, some people say, oh, it'll be all right. And we're going to have a hurricane party and, uh, you know, things like that. But, you know, if you, if you realize that's coming, uh, the smart thing is to get ready. And that's what he said. Get ready. Be ready. He's going to say that in the last part of verse uh, chapter 24 and chapter 25 is all about getting ready. You can learn all the facts and figures about the second coming, but are you ready for the second coming? That's key. So let's look, look at verse 39. He says, they knew not until the flood came. And then now here's the next little key phrase. Uh, it's four words. Took them all away. Uh, when we first started, the very first night, we started looking at Matthew 24. And that was <coughs> several months ago, wasn't it, Carl? <laughs> <laughs> That was several months ago. And uh, I said that, that Matthew 24 and the events, Matthew 24 is all about one event. There's a lot of events and characteristics and conditions and signs, if you will, because Jesus is asking, answering the question of the disciples, what is the sign of thy coming? But it's all about one event. And that's the second coming. And we said the second coming is about one thing. What was it? Taking away the sinners. Hmm? Taking away the sinners. Taking away the sinners. But what do we call that? Judgment. 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 And that's one of the, you know, we always talk about, well, why can't this be the rapture? Because the rapture is not about judgment. The rapture is about deliverance. It's about taking those who know Jesus Christ as Savior out of the church age. The, the rapture is, oh boy, hallelujah, here we go to heaven. You know, and, and, and I've heard people say, I can't wait till Jesus comes. And I said, well, I hope you're talking about comes down in the air and pulls you up off the earth in the rapture because I'll guarantee you, you can wait for the second coming. Because if you're not right, you don't want to be on the earth when the second coming is. Because the second coming is all about judgment. Amen. Now it's true that there will be many saved during the, during the tribulation period. But still, they will have to undergo, they will be here on this earth enduring. Isn't that what he said? He said, they that endureth to the end shall be saved. And he's not talking about spiritually, he's talking about physically. It'll be a hard time to live. I mean, earthquakes, famines, pestilence, wars, uh, blood, uh, water turning to blood, and I mean, on and on and on, the cataclysm, cataclysms go. So, when we say in verse 39, took them all away, and we, well, we've already established the fact that the second coming was about judgment. What was the flood about? Judgment. Oh, you mean it wasn't a happy time? No. Mm -mm. You mean, woo! The world's going to be flooded and I'm going to be... <laughs> no, that, that, there's no happiness in the judgment before the... before... Uh, or right at the flood, before the flood and that, that civilization. And there's no happy happiness about the second coming because Jesus is coming to, to uh, judge the earth. That's what, that's what uh, Matthew 25 is. Tares among the wheat, Matthew, Matthew 13, tares among the wheat, Matthew 25, uh, five wise virgins and five not, uh, uh, mm, Matthew, can't remember the exact chapter, we'll look at here in just a minute, uh, sheep, and, sheep and goats 25, <coughs> it's all about judgment, every one of them, and they're all related to the, uh, you know, uh, to the second coming. So we understand that the what what he's indicating here by the days of Noah were times of judgment. Now, before the the days before the flood and leading up to my second coming is going to be about judgment, and that's what this little phrase "took them all away" means. Uh, judgment takes things away. It's a it's a take away thing. So shall also 
the coming of the Son of Man be. So the flood took away and the coming of the <coughs> Son of Man is going to take away. Uh, and he uses in verse 40 and 41 uh, two metaphors, if you will, or two illustrations of what he's talking about. And this is one of those, I think what we're actually already talking about, we're going to talk about it again. Uh, this is one of those sections of Scripture that people misinterpret, I think, and in error apply to the rapture. Now, one of the reasons I know it's not the rapture is, number one, I just said that the second coming is about judgment. The rapture is not about judgment. Mm -hmm. Number two, the second coming is visible. Everybody will see it. Yeah. Revelation 1, 7, for every eye shall behold him. Uh, i got other verses on and on and on. Uh, <coughs> Titus 2, 13, 2 Peter 3, 10. We're going to look at some of these. Revelation 19, 11 through 14. All these are about <coughs> seeing this happen. <coughs> rapture, you don't see. Right. Why? Because it says in a moment... In the twinkling of an eye, the dead in Christ shall rise and go to meet the Lord. Uh, he didn't come down. We go up. And it happens in the twinkling of an eye, which is about four thousandths of a second, uh, according to the people that measure stuff like that. I'd hate to have a job like that. But anyway, they know, they know better than I on that. But, uh, so you're not going to see the rapture, but you're going to see the second coming if you're here. You're going to see him coming. He, Jesus said, you'll see the Son of Man coming in the cloud. What, he was in Acts. When in Acts chapter 1, he said, why you men stand here gazing? This same Jesus who, who goes away this way will so come again. He'll come again down to earth uh, visibly in the clouds. So that's one, two reasons I know this is not the rapture. Third of all, uh, second, uh, third thing is we've already seen that the rapture occurs in the before, and we saw the chronology of it, didn't we? Mm -hmm. Matthew 24 doesn't... We can't talk about the rapture in Matthew 24. Why? Because it was still a mystery. Yeah. It was a mystery till Paul. Who was the first person on the face of the earth that knew about the rapture? Paul. Paul. Old knothead Paul. He said, Behold, I show you a mystery. You see? We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. The moment we go to night. So, Paul, see, a mystery is something that hadn't up to that time. You could have studied a billion books for a billion years, and you still would not have discovered the rapture because God hadn't released that information yet. You know? So, Paul says it was released, released to me first. That's what a mystery is. And so Paul was a very... Where's Paul in reference to Matthew 24? He's a good many years down the road. His ministry was like in, six, uh, like in 60 AD. Matthew 24 is like in 30 AD. So he's at least 30 years down the road. And so there, it can't be the rapture based on that. Because it was a mystery at that point. So there's a lot of reasons why I don't believe Matthew 24, 40, and 41 have anything to do with the rapture, but also Matthew 24 and 40, 40 and 41 in context are about judgment taking somebody away. Ain't that what he's been talking about? Mm -hmm. He said the flood will come and took them all away. Now there's your context. And then he says... Guess what? The days before my coming will be just like that. All right? So he says, carry that context of how things happened at the flood. And, and I'm going to say this right now, okay? So we'll, we'll get this, we'll get this, you know, we'll get this mule already hooked up to the wagon. It wasn't the ark that took them away. What did Jesus say here? What took them away? The flood took them away. Now, if the ark took them away, they were saved. Mm -hmm. If the ark, if he's talking about the ones that were took away from the ark, that that is a judgment. That's salvation, praise yeah. God. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But Jesus Himself said it's the flood that took them away. Because I've heard people preach this and teach this and say, "Oh, see, there it's rapture. 
uh, you know, Jesus come and takes them away. It doesn't say Jesus come and takes them away. It said the flood took them away, and the flood is the judgment. Yeah. You know, so that's what we're talking about. So the context is there for us. So when we get to verses 40 and 41, and he uses these two metaphors about this event, and he says, Then shall two be in the field, and the one shall be taken, and the other left. Now, like I say, a lot of people read that. So let's talk about the rapture. One should be taken, the other left. Uh, then he goes down to verse 41. Two women shall be grinding at the mill. The one shall be taken and the other left. Mm -hmm. Taken is the key word. We get it from verse 39. Took them away. The past tense or the down road tense of that. If I say, you know, the bus is going to come and take you away. If I say, the bus came and took them away, what have I done? There's two tenses there. Mm -hmm. One is future, one is past. Okay? He says, the bus is going to come and take them all away, That's, or, or the flood came and took them all away, and guess what? The rapture, uh, the, excuse me, the, the second coming and the judgment associated with it is going to come and take some away. That is contextual interpretation. You have to twist everything completely backwards <coughs> to make it fit with the rapture. Now, is the rapture going to separate people? Absolutely. And and but this this particular situation that Jesus is talking about at his coming and his second coming is about judgment. Judgment always separates Good and evil. Mm -hmm. Always. There are a lot of, Jesus talks about a lot of judgments in the Bible. This is not, it's not the only one, but I mean, he, a lot of these things refer to it. Uh, let's look at Matthew 13 and verse 24. We're right there at Matthew, Matthew 13. Everybody, everybody having a good time? Yeah. Okay. All right. All right. That's what we want. Matthew 13 and verse 24 through 30. We won't read all of those, but I think we're going to read enough of them to, uh, to get the context. Matthew 13, what does he say here? Another parable, verse 24, he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is like unto, unto a man which sowed good seed in his field. But while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat. So you've got a field and you've got two different crops growing. Wheat and tares, okay? Mm -hmm. He said, but when the blade was sprung up, when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So, uh, you know, after the grove, you know, that's thing. Uh, that's a little spiritual nugget there we need to throw in here, and I'll, I'll charge you for this. Uh, real spiritual conversion will be proven by the fruit. Amen. Mm -hmm. You can't, you, you, you got two fellows sitting here and say, I got the seed. What's the seed? Oh, I got the salvation. I got it in me. I got the seed in here. Well, maybe you do, maybe you don't. Let's see what kind of fruit you put for. Yeah. You may say, I got, I'm an apple seed. That guy says, I'm a pear seed. Well, let's see if you put on pears and apples. Then I believe you got the, the, those seeds. That's what, and that's just, like I say, that, I just throw that in there. Don't cost you. All right, look at verse 27. So the servants of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, uh, didst not thou sow good seed in the field? From whence then hath it tares? And nothing wrong with God's seed, amen. Right. He said unto them, An enemy hath done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou, uh, wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? Hey, you know, hey, we've got to get that bad stuff out among the good stuff. Even they understand it needs to be separated. You know, you, you want wheat to make bread. You don't want huckleberries or huckle huckleberries like we used to call them. Uh, Maypops or whatever you used yeah, to. You remember Maypops? Maypops. Milkweed or whatever. You don't want that in your bread. You want good seed. You want good wheat. So he says, you want us to go out there and start gathering? Oh, he said, no, wait a minute. He said, verse 29. But he said, nay, lest while you gather up the tares, you root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together, listen, until the harvest. The second coming is a harvest. The second coming is when, you see, at the rapture, 
there's no separation. There's no. I mean, I understand that there's people left on the earth that aren't saved during the church age, but Jesus don't sit down and say, oh, yeah, no, yeah, no. But every other judgment related to, uh, judgment teaching that he teaches about his second coming is always illustrated by tares among the wheat, tares and wheat, sheep and goats, <clears throat> virgins with oil in their lamps and virgins with not in their lamps. Question. Yes, sir. The, the ten virgins with, lamp, with the oil and without the spiritual oil, mm -hmm. the good wheat and the bad wheat, can't. God let me preach on that to bring into modern time how people live. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, you got good, good tares and mm -hmm. bad tares. And am, I, am I on the right track? You understand what I'm saying? Yeah, I understand. Uh, and I, I don't... So it's like the ten virgins. <coughs> the five of them had the Spirit of God. Mm -hmm. And the rest of them kind of slept and didn't care about God. And mm -hmm. then when God comes, even... In a modern time like now, the people are saved would be ready, and the people not saved won't be ready. Sure. When that spirit comes. Sure. The, 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 <coughs> the spiritual application can be at any time. Okay. That's so in other words, you got like I say, you got two people here. You have two people living in the church. And one say, "Oh yeah, I'm saved," and I got to see. And one said, "Yeah, I'm saved too," but one does and one don't. You don't see when he said. When he said that they didn't know until it grew up mm -hmm. and the fruit began to prove it. So the spiritual application is the same. But in particular, when Jesus teaches it, like in 20, the last part of 24 and 25, those parables of the wheat and the tares here and sheep and goats and stuff like that, the key thing is that the owner, uh, here they ask the owner of the field, what do you want to do? He said, you just calm yourself. Because there's going to be a day I'm going to sit down and I'm going to pluck the tares among the wheat. You see? He said, I'm going to decide. There's going to be a separation. That's what, that's what this idea is. Judgment always is about judgment. The, 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 the one who owns the wheat judges if it's wheat or tares. The one that owns the sheep and the goat says, well, that's a goat and that's a sheep. Uh, the one who looks at the lamps and says, well, that lamp's good and that lamp's empty and got nothing in it. He's making a judgment call based on the evidence. That's what, Je that's what Jesus is talking about in his second coming. This is when all these judgments are going to take place. Uh, he's going to sit down and he's going to... These people are going to be, the nations are going to be judged. Mm -hmm. When he said, uh, uh, he gathered all the nations before him and he judged them and uh, began to judge them. And what did he judge them based on? We do it every year. The done unto me. Mm -hmm. He said, he said, uh, you, you know, you go over here, you're a good person. You go over here and, and you, you're a good nation. Well, how, do, how is it that we rank to be a good nation or, or a good person? In as much as you've seen my, you've seen my children, you've seen them hungry and destitute and naked and in prison. You fed them and visited them. Amen. What's that? What's he judging the nations on? Based when he comes in second, he's judging them on how they treated Israel. Israel. Mm -hmm. He said, "That's my people. Mm -hmm. You know, you tried to help them." You tried to feed them. You tried to clothe them. Now, it's, it's applicable to individuals as well. The, the principle is the same. But specifically, when he's talking about this and judging these nations, you know, these nations are going to pay for the things that they've done. Right. Yeah. Adolf Hitler, you know, says, oh, well, he got away with it. He killed himself and he, didn't, he wasn't judged. Oh, yes. He he did, did. Did. <laughs> and every nation that, uh, you know, that, that done that. And that's what he's talking about in that. But that's the whole idea. Whether it's tares and wheat, whether it's goats and sheep, whether it's uh, this and that, uh, it's all about the judge making the judgment. Mm -hmm. At the rapture, he don't make no judgment. Mm -hmm. You're just saved. You're, you're a born-again child of God. We will, hey, I, 
You know why the rapture ain't about the judgment? Because I'm saved. Amen. If I'm still going to have to be judged for my sin, if I'm still going to have to be judged for, uh, what did I escape? What was Paul saying in Romans 8, 1 when he said, Therefore, there is now no condemnation to them who are in Christ Jesus. Now. You say, oh, well, one day, I heard, I talked to a fellow one time, he was in a, in a black church, and, and uh, I asked him, I was asking him about his salvation. He said, well, said, I, I believe that, that, you know, you live the best you can, and this is a guy who's a Baptist living in a, ba a black Baptist church. He said, I believe you live the best you can, then you stand before God, and he decides whether you go to heaven or hell. No. Nope. Man, that ain't nothing. I, don't, I told him, I said, man, that's, that's no way, I, I want to know now. And that's what Jesus said, you can know now, salvation now. Amen. I'm, I, I, listen, I may, I, I hope I don't lose my mind and do great and horrible and awful things before I uh, go home and be with Jesus, either through the grave or through the rapture. But I know one thing, sitting right here, right now, I'm as saved as I'm ever going to be. Amen. Amen. Thank you. I'm not lost. I am Amen. saved. I have escaped the judgment. Hallelujah. Yeah. I don't have to worry the judgment. Some people say, oh, well, if you believe that, you'll just go out here and live like the devil. Well, if you do that, you ain't, something ain't right inside. Amen. That's right. A true born-again child of God who knows he's not going to be judged and appreciates what Christ has done in his heart. He's been washed in his precious blood and the Holy Spirit's moved in and energized him and, and, and reborn him into, into a child of God. Ain't going to want to take advantage. He's not going to want to. That's right. No. He, he, you know, he made mistakes. He'll make mistakes. Sure, we all do. We've all sinned to come short of the glory of God. Bless. And, and we'll fail. But the true born-again child of God is not going to use sin or he's not going to use grace, as Paul said in Galatians, as an occasion to the flesh. Right. A true yes. born-again child of God is not going to use the liberty we receive through Jesus Christ and his forgiveness for an occasion to do what they do. And really a totally different thing. But I think we can see in the scriptures that we're developing that uh, that this this judgment, this second coming is a total judgment and it, and it parallels what he's talking about. Uh, well, look at verse 49. Uh, of uh, we're right at Matthew 13 <clears throat> parable of the two kingdoms now all these when you say kingdom what what should your brain do knowing kingdom that's after after his second coming kingdom is not now now we live in the kingdom of heaven the spiritual kingdom the heavenly kingdom we can live that way but in Matthew 13, and, and really all of Matthew 13, he's using parables and talking about the kingdom. All right? Look at verse 44. Again, the kingdom of heaven is likened to a treasure hid in the field. Look at verse 45. Again, again the kingdom of heaven is likened to a merchant man seeking goodly pearls. Um, all right, let's, let's look at this. Uh, and again, the kingdom of heaven, verse 47, is likened to a net that was cast in the sea and gathered every kind which when it was full, they drew it to shore, sat down and gathered the good into it. Wait a minute. What have we been talking about? Separation. Hairs, Separation. wheat, yeah. goats, sheep. Separation. Look what he says here. Judgment and separation by, based on judgment. He gathered every kind in the net and in verse 48 he said, which when it was full, they drew to the shore and sat down and gathered the good into vessels, but cast the bad away. That's judgment. Mm -hmm. Those fishermen knew what was good and bad. And they sat down. Just, this is the way Jesus, when he said the kingdom of heaven is like this, he said, this is the way it's going to be when we get to my kingdom. I'm going to sit down at the end of this uh, age and after I come and you know I've bought, fought these battles and now I'm going to judge all this, all this that went on and um, it's going to be like I, like these fishermen that sit down and they go through the deck. Well, that's a good one. We'll keep him. That's bad. We'll throw him away. Mm -hmm. Is that not judgment? And every time Jesus talks about this, 
He uses metaphors and analogies based on that. Um, so uh, it lends itself to what we're talking about that's going on in, in Matthew 24. Uh, turn back to Matthew 3. Uh, there's a lot of these in here. I don't know that we, I mean, it's, it won't hurt to look at these, but uh, I'm not, I won't even have all of them listed. Matthew chapter 3. Even as early as the ministry of John the Baptist in Jesus' earthly ministry, look what John the Baptist was talking about in, in Matthew chapter 3 and verse 12. He's preaching in the wilderness there. And he says to bring, verse 8, he says to bring forth fruits, meat or worthy of repentance. In other words, if you say you've repented, let's see some fruit. You know, if you say you're born again, child of God, you've been saved by the grace of God, you've been spiritually regenerated, you're changed, you're different, then let's see it. Okay? And he says, go down to... Uh, Verse 12, or verse, let's go to verse 11. I indeed baptize you with water into repentance. It's about the third or fourth time he's mentioned repentance. But he that in repentance means a change. Mm -hmm. Okay? You don't just say, well, I got saved, but nothing changed. If you didn't change, you didn't get saved. Um, and, you know, I, I'm sorry that that hurts somebody's feelings, but it's a truth. truth. It's true. I indeed baptize you with water into repentance, but he that cometh after me is mightier than I, whose shoes I'm not worthy to bear. He shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost and fire. Now look at verse 12. Whose fan is in his hand, and he will thoroughly purge his floor. When you hear fan and floor, what does it remind you of? What does it tell? What is it? Your brain goes ding like we do on fan and floor. Fanning the wheat, separating the chaff from the, the good seed. That's how they did that. I remember David went out and bought a thrashing floor where what they would do, they would bring the, the stalks of wheat or any other kind of grain that, that made a, a, a head on it. When I, when I grew up, my, my grandmother and grandfather owned a dairy farm and they grew wheat and barley and hops and all kinds of field chop and all of it grew up in a stalk which was perfectly worthless. <laughs> Cows wouldn't eat it. But at the top of it, it had a grain, it had a, uh, a pot of grain. And, and, that, and they would cut that and it would dry out. Then they would take it and they would do things they would uh, walk on. Some people walked on it. They'd have a flat place. And, uh, and they would walk on it, or animals would trot on it, or they would break it, break them. And then, but then they had a hodgepodge of sticks and leaves and seeds. Well, they didn't want the sticks and the leaves, so they would, they would take a big fan. This is back in David, not back in this day. No, not my grandpa didn't do that, but uh, he had a machine to do it. But uh, uh, they would take a big, people would take big fans and make, make wind. And then the other guy would throw it up, and the, the chaff was so dry and, 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 and so small, it would blow away. But the, the good seed would fall on the floor. Mm -hmm. What were they doing? They were separating the good from the bad. They were judging. That's what it's all about. So when he says here in verse, uh, verse 12 of chapter 3, whose fan is in his hand, he will thoroughly purge his floor and gather his wheat into the garner, but we'll burn up the chaff with unquenchable fire. So judgment is all about making the determination that something is worthy or not worthy, good or bad. The Bible calls it most often good and evil, which is kind of basically the same thing as good and bad. But it just simply means, you know what good and evil means in, in the relationship in, in God's judgment? When he, when he looks down at the fish, he looks down at the tares and the wheat, looks down at the here, the the seed and the chaff, and he says, he looks at the chaff, and he says, I don't want that. <clears throat> but he looks at the wheat and says, I do want that. 
you see. And you say, well, how terrible that somebody's life. But that's what that's what it's all about. I'm not worried. If one day he, he's going to look at me. He looked at me at, at Calvary and when I got saved. And he said, I want that. He's worthy. Not because of me. Not my, I, well, you know where I got my worthy? I bought my worthy at the Jesus store. Amen. Amen. I got my worthy from the, the blood that was shed Amen. on Calvary. That's why I'm worthy. That's why he's going to look at me someday and say, yep. You're a sheep, you can go in. Yep, you're wheat, you can go in. Yep, you're you're good seed, you're not chaff, you can go in. Isn't that wonderful? That's what judgment's about. But that's what Jesus is talking about, and, and in relation to especially to what we're talking about here, Matthew 24, it's a time of judgment. The second coming is a time of judgment when Jesus sits down, sits down and decides all that he wants to keep. And what, what did he do with the rest of it? Every time, threw it away. He threw away the fish that were bad. Mm -hmm. He threw away the chaff that was bad. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so it, it's all about judgment. Uh, and that's what Jesus is talking about in verses 41, 40 and 41. And with all the other reasons we talked about, why well, I believe that's not applicable to rapture, that to, to me is very significant. That the rapture is not a time where he's, he's already decided, evidently, he already knows. He don't come down and say, all right, you're going to go with me, you're going to go with me, you're going to go with me. He comes down and he just says, come up here. Is, am, I, am I correct in saying in Revelation chapter 4 mm -hmm. that he only says three words? He doesn't judge. He doesn't make decisions. The decision's already been made during the church age. Come mm -hmm. up here. here. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Well, and when he comes back, amen. And when he comes back at the second coming, it'll be a whole different day. That's right. uh, it'll be a day of reckoning. The Bible describes it as a day of dark. A day of, I think I've read these before and I'm not going to read on to it, but a day of darkness, a spoke of sorrow, uh, of pain, of suffering, of weeping, of gnashing of teeth. That's the description that God's Word gives it. I know it's going to, listen, after, after He comes and, and, and makes the judgment and then sits down and starts establishes His kingdom <coughs> and His kingdom comes up back on this earth, and there's no death, no sorrow, all that, all that. That's going to be a great day. <coughs> but the day itself is not going to be a great day. It's going to be as my late dean in school, Dr. Harold Wilmington, said, it's going to be the worst day in human history. Mm -hmm. Absolutely the worst day. Anything you can think of won't even compare with how bad that day is going to be. Because that's the day, and, I, and I'm going to say this, and I've heard other preachers preach it and say it, and I, it, but if you look, if you look at all those, if you look at all those examples of judgment, tares among the wheat, chaff against the grain, good fish, bad fish, whatever. The second coming, that day and that judgment, is the day God takes out the trash. God takes out what? Takes out the trash. Right. And you say, well, don't God love them? Oh, absolutely God loved those people. But they made a choice to be. Well, they That's right. They made a choice to be a terror. They made a choice to be chaff. They made a choice to be a bad fish, whatever you want to call it. They, every one of those was good and bad. And that's why Dr. Wynn said it's going to be the worst day in human history. Because <coughs> two things. It's the worst thing man would ever want to happen to himself being cast away from God and cast into hell, which is the burning and the chaff and burning up the chaff. 
it's the worst day that man would ever want to have. But it's also the worst day God would ever want to have. God, didn't, God don't want to throw nobody away. God don't want to condemn nobody. He said he's not willing that any should perish. Amen. At all should come to But his holiness and his the, the things he said in his word, he has to take out the trash. Even in heaven. Did you know that? Uh, even in heaven, uh, it talks about this separation. Uh, Revelation 22, uh, verse 15, and we'll be done. Revelation 22, verse 15. Heaven is heaven's a place of wonderful peace and rest and joy and eternal life. Who lives in heaven besides all the saints and all the angels? Does it have a very special resident? God. Mm -hmm. Why does heaven have walls? Somebody can't if God me. lives there, somebody can't come in. Unless, unless born again, washed in blood, just anybody can't right. come up on. Anytime you put up a wall, it's either to keep people in or to keep people out. I'm going to say keep people out. Yeah, keep, keep them from coming in or keep people out. Because if you're in, you don't want to leave. I don't think there's going to be mass midnight escape plans from heaven. You got 12 doors. If you don't leave, you can leave. But I ain't going to be no leave. But what does it say in Revelation 22 and verse 15? He said, Blessed are they, in verse 14, that, that, uh, that do his commandments that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. For without or outside are dogs and sorcerers and whoremongers and murderers and idolaters and whatsoever loveth and maketh a lie. Separation. Based on spiritual quality. Amen. I won't be in heaven because I'm perfect. I'll be in heaven because Jesus made me perfect. Amen. I had some fellow say one time, you have to be per I asked him, I said, you have to be perfect go to heaven? Oh, no. I said, you do too. But you can't make yourself perfect. It's Jesus makes you perfect. That's what those two verses are about, 40 and 41. Two will be in the field. Two will be working. Judgment will take one. The other will be late. All right. Any questions before we leave tonight? Thanks for being here, by the way. I want to Brother, thank everybody out there in television land. You want to? <laughs> Brother Lickery, can we do that? Yes, sir. An update on the jail. Oh, yes. Go ahead. So on Christmas Day, every inmate in the jail, it's 120, I believe, got a brown paper sack. With, on the outside it said Merry Christmas from North Beaver Baptist Church and the side it was a devotional that the church bought and Bible that the church uh, donated and a thing of shaving cream not shaving cream, uh, deodorant and uh, shampoo and some hard candy and it was extremely well received Good. Oh, the, man. Uh, awesome. the, uh, some of the inmates I, I talked to in the last couple weeks they said that they uh, they've been trying to put together a, a Bible study and they didn't have the material for it, and they were kind of struggling. And they said this was a, an answer to prayer. So some, several of them are, are doing uh, a Bible study based on the devotion that they gave them. And they're, they're going through it chapter by chapter. So. Amen. Amen. That's so awesome. The church for, Amen. You know, supporting that. Praise the Lord. Amen. I think we'll give Jesus a hand. Amen. And, and, and pray for those devotional books. And lay, you know, I don't believe we're living in apostolic times when we can pray over rags and take them somewhere and get them healed. But I believe we need to pray over things like that. That, that those men will, will read them and when they read them, the very first two chapters 
is about how to get saved. It's like a track and then a, a discipleship program in one book. So we want to see them saved and then see them learning how to live for Jesus. And if they do that, when they come out of that jail, they will be different. Amen. Mm -hmm. they'll, they'll not only be free from jail cells, but they'll be free from the captivity of sin yeah. Yeah. and free from the devil. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Thank you. Amen. I appreciate you doing that. All right. All right. Let's be dismissed with a word of prayer. Thank you for being here. Thank you, ladies, for the for the meal. It was awful good. Potato soup and uh, vegetable beef soup. Oh, man, that's just my two favorite soups right there, really. Except for T-bone soup. I like T-bone. <laughs> a little bit of water and about eight T-bones in a pot. <laughs> All right, Brother Carl, would you dismiss us with a word of prayer? Uh, Heavenly Father, Lord, we just again thank you for the, the blessings that you give each of us, Lord. We are so thankful to uh, gather back together yes. this Wednesday night, Lord, listening to uh, your word. Lord, we appreciate Brother Rick and explaining it to us, helping us to better understand it, Lord. Hopefully we can take this and spread the news to others yes. and explain it to them, Lord. Again, we thank you for all that you do. We look forward to this new year that you're going to bless us with. We look forward to what you have in store for us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Just uh, one name.